Elizabeth wears clothes. Ah, the roaring 70s. Well, it wasn't roaring at all. It was just full of people in very colourful clothes. Uh, some women had horn-rimmed glasses. Some people just uh, shouldn't have went out that day. It was also part of a big John Travolta time, of course, uh, with Saturday Night Fever. I mean, look at those shoes, man. Man. There was more to TV at that time, of course. They had many things going on. Most of all, Lee Majors was making me jump very high while making lots of noise. Everybody remembers going dugga -du -dugga -du -dugga -du 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 from the 70s and 80s. Is that continued right away through? And while all this was going on, there was a small war happening in the background, and all because of these kind of watches. This is a Swiss made Favre Lubre, made in Geneva. It has a very clever strap. It actually pulls out a little bit when uh, you can see it's just pulling away there, just a small bit. When it gets caught on something or your arm swells up, it actually moves without opening the clasp. But of course you can open the clasp and as you can see the face is absolutely gorgeous and could easily pass off as a very modern watch, even though the strap is a little bit old. There's a strap opening as you can see, it just falls open, it's a beautifully made strap, it's like liquid, the strap is like liquid. But the face itself has actually got a blue background and you have a stopwatch at the very top here where you press it just begins to run. Um, and a clever bit is when you want to reset it after it's been running for a bit because you have two hands inside it uh, and it flies around. And this side here actually counts the, uh, the seconds passing or the you know, split seconds passing. Uh, and the big hand, the second hand that you can see at the top is, uh, is counting the stopwatch seconds. So it's slightly different. I'll let it run for a minute and you can see the back here. The back is actually very clever too, very nice looking. It does look old fashioned around the rear, but realistically, you know, it could, like I say, it could pass off as a modern watch, even though this was made in the 70s. Now, the war I spoke of actually included Swatch. Um, every watch was really Swiss made when they first set out. But what Swatch did, and another Timex as well, were actually added to, were to bring quartz movement into it. Quartz movement was a totally different aspect. Quartz ran on a battery, and these watches. Basically, when you wind them, you wind a spring up and the spring begins to unwind and that's what runs the watch inside. There's no batteries in them. Quartz actually does run batteries. Now, hold on, reset this here for a second. See the way it springs back to the top? It's very nice, really nice. Always springs back up to the very top as well like that. You can see the thickness of the watch there. It's quite nice. Uh, just to show you, there's the Citizen one we reviewed last time. That's the difference in thickness between the two and size of face. You can see the size of the Citizen watch actually quite large compared to, compared to the Faber-Lubra. Uh, but, you know, it's an old-fashioned kind of watch. It doesn't look that small on your arm. The Citizen watch is actually quite big on your arm. But the war continued for years between quartz and Swiss movement. Quartz watches could be made much more cheaply and by machine, and that was the key of the entire thing. You could actually make these things by machine rather than having to be assembled by hand with a guy with a magnifying glass and the tweezers. Uh, and the same for servicing the watches. You could service a, a quartz movement watch much quicker just by changing the battery. It may never even need to be serviced, but these watches do need to be serviced every once in a while. Now you can see the second hand over to the left hand side of the screen there, which is actually counting the normal seconds passing by, and the yellow hand actually stays still. That is purely for stopwatch and tachymeter, which is the two bits that it actually does. So there you have it. Favre Lube, with a little bit of a history lesson attached. Think about the next time you're, you're thinking about buying a, a Swiss movement watch, that they are assembled generally by little men in little offices in the back ass of little warehouses, uh, where they put together these watches from scratch. And when they service them, they actually take them completely asunder, uh, piece by piece, and reassemble them later. Whereas a quartz watch made is made by um, a machine. Uh, and just to give you an example, Swatch actually owns pretty much every big watch manufacturer out there, including Omega and I think Rolex are even owned by them. So Sw Swatch actually went on to kind of conquer the watch world. But Swiss watches are back. They're cool. They're back being a neat little thing to have. So it's a, it's a collector's item, this one. This is a more or less a one of a kind at this stage. There's only one other one, I think, on the internet. And there's a guy on, on eBay looking for silly money for it. Uh, but this, this watch is actually available, and it is for sale as a, as a working watch, fully tested, and it's in uh, 
uh, Weirs and Sons shop. So get along and have a look.